Okay, this video is basically a very informative video of what I learned about this old Tohatsu Mercury Nissan 25 horsepower in that um, a lot of people replace the fuel pump and the VST on these motors and the issue they run into is they burn out the ECU. Why do you burn out the ECU? Well, the original Mercury Tohatsu, actually they don't even build this, it's made by Kine. Um, the original fuel pump pulls 3 amps. The aftermarket pumps pull 5.5 amps. Uh, 6 amps at startup. How do I know this? Well, I bought this motor, if you've seen my previous videos, I threw in my pump, blah, blah, blah. It ran great. It ran great for 30 minutes and then it would die. You let it cool off for half an hour, run for another 20, 30 minutes and it would die. Well, what you're looking at is a 30 horsepower ECU I got off of eBay. Um, this is the original ECU. I took it apart. I was hoping to see if I could dig it out and fix it up, but it's potted pretty well. Here's the important bit of information. These are two 1805 resistors over here. And there you go, if you can tell. Um, basically what was happening is the, the resistor was overheating trying to supply the additional current to the fuel pumps and if you run this motor um, I would literally be running it I put stick my hand right here in the middle and it would be boiling hot I mean I threw water and the water would steam off but the rest of the ECU was fine um, well come to find out well after I tore my ECU apart I decided uh, let me run um, the fuel pump off a relay so the ECU is not taking the load because I don't want to spend $700 on a fuel pump. Um, initially I've got a little automotive relay here. This is a Ford relay because they use flyback diodes. I used the trigger off the ECU to close the relay which ran the pump. Now this ran fine. Problem was the stator. Um, this particular motor has a stator, it's electric start, electric trim, and here's a voltage rectifier. At idle, it's only putting out 2.5 amps. Uh, that means if you have if you have a battery in the system and the battery's always connected, that's fine. Here's your battery connection. As you can see, I tapped off the main battery. If you're running it off the battery, just fine. I decided because this is supposed to be a batteryless EFI. I disconnected the battery, the motor still ran, but then the fuel pump was pulling 2.5 amps, the regulators, I'm sorry, the, the pump was pulling 5.5, the regulator was putting out 2.5, I think I burnt out the pump. Um, I bought one of these pumps off of um, do, 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 Amazon, it's called Quantum. And they sent me a new pump, which is great. Then I got the service manual for this motor, which which told me 3.2 amps. Ah, something clicked. So I had to come up with a different way of doing this. So let's go over here. I drew up a little diagram of the theory of operation. Um, this is how the system normally works. Your stator actually has two outputs. You've got one output that drives the... ECU, which is a computer, and the other one for the rectifier for your starter and your battery, they're independent systems. The batteryless portion comes in because the ECU portion supplies the power for the fuel pump, the TPS, and the sensor. So the ECU actually has a built in rectifier regulator for 5 volts for the sensors and 12 volts for the fuel pump. Um, since I know I'm not putting out enough for the aftermarket pump, and if I ran the pump off of a relay off the battery, and the battery was disconnected, I burned something else out. So let me show you what I did. It looks a little complicated. Uh, it sort of is. I am using diodes. So I've got two 20 amp diodes. I basically tapped into the output power of the ECU, going to the fuel pump, which is still, the ECU is still supplying its 3.2 amps. The additional 2.5 amps are going to come from the battery now. Um, and then, and kind of went a little bit more to it. 
I could have left it as is, and but I'm running a 12 volt relay again. I'm using that automotive relay um, because it has a flyback on there. I'm using the ECU's negative trigger to close the relay, and the relay is all it's doing is it's supplying ground voltage to the fuel pump. So the relay is not really taking much of a load. The relay is also being powered, it's tapped into the same line that's coming from the battery and the fuel pump. And that's also a teed back into the fuel pump. So the theory of operation is aftermarket fuel pump needs 5.5 amps. It's pulling 3.2 from the ECU and the rest comes from the stator which puts out 2. I still get to charge my battery. As you rev up the motor above idle, um, of course the stator and the battery system will put out more amperage. I've seen up to 12 amps, so um, the pump will actually start drawing from the battery and the ECU, it'll draw down on the ECU. It actually works. Um, ran the numbers on the water. Again, this is for the aftermarket fuel pumps. If you use an OEM fuel pump, not an issue. Why is this an issue? Um, the older 2006 to 2014 motors, the 25 and 30 horsepower, are prone to this failure. Uh, 2014 and up, they are using a different fuel pump and a larger driver. Um, and you can, if you go to the Mercury Parts book, to Hatsu Parts book, you can see that there's a very different fuel pump in the 2014. Um, if your serial number begins with an OR, let's see if I can, there you go. If your serial number begins with an OR, you are in the older category. You need the older pump, lower amperage. If your serial number begins with a 1C, you can use the newer pump. Um, these guys at Quantum, I contacted them, I told them what the problem was, and they basically said, oh yeah, we have a 3.2 amp pump. So they sent me another, they sent me two pumps. They sent me a standard pump and lower amperage pump. I ran both pumps, both pumps are the same, they come out of the same factory, different color, different housing. That's why I did my you know, Goopy Gop Band-Aid over here, basically again, you're running it off, it's a fuse, I'm running a 10 amp fuse, this drives the pump, your negative triggers over here, is basically coming into the relay, your fuel pump wire drives the relay, the diodes, I used a 20 amp diode because the 10 amp, 20 amp, physically the sizes were the same. Uh, the 20 amp would run cooler if I needed to. Uh, the diodes were 20 for $3 on Amazon, something like that. Um, motor runs great, and the proof is I've ran the uh, motor, the ECU stayed at a constant 85 degrees, all of the ECU. Um, Here's your voltage rectifier for the starter. Now, if you don't have an electric start, um, you can add one of these uh, regulators and actually, you know, because the connector is there, you can actually add the regulator and get yourself uh, battery charging cables. You can still modify. So now, you, I did this at my own risk. Uh, if you want to do this, go for it. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. Um, Again, it is a learning process. I do have the service manual for this motor. That's kind of how I know what the amperage requirements are and the theory of operation. Um, it is a very neat motor.